Hi guys, welcome back to Infinite Possibilities, the podcast where we explore the lives of amazing people, their choices, challenges and opportunities. And today I have a very special guest, Annie. Hello. hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Annie. Of oh, course, cool. thanks for having me, Karen. <laughs> yeah, so Annie, what do you do? What's your sort of one minute introduction? Uh, yeah, so I'm a consultant here at KPMG um, and I work within the operations advisory team in management consulting. Wow, very, very awesome. Mm -hmm. So we really want to explore Annie's humble beginnings. Yeah, so right from the start, Annie, what kind of child were you like growing up? Um, well, I guess when I was quite young, I was super shy, super introverted. Ooh, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I have come a long way, but I was just like attached to my mum at the hip. I would not let her go. Um, she that's could not so go cute. grocery shopping without me. Oh, she couldn't go so to the cute. gym. I would not le let her leave my side. Um, so yeah, I was super introverted as a kid um, and then I think kind of towards the end of high school I started to come out of my shell a bit more, um, I guess just through like, yeah, getting involved in like sport and stuff um, and yeah, I don't know, just growing up, getting more <laughs> comfortable in my own skin but yeah, super shy growing up. That's kind of cute. Yeah, and tell me more about your siblings. My siblings, yes, I have two older sisters. Um, they are twins um, and they're four years older than me. Wow, and do they look exactly the same? They are identical. Um, oh yeah, so a lot of people do think they look pretty similar. When they were young, they looked the exact same, and oh. then now they've kind of developed into their own human beings. So yeah, yeah wow. Did now. you ever like get them confused? No, I never did. No. no. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Good yeah. sister. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And were they like really protective sisters, and so you were sort of like retreating in your shell, kind of thing? Um, potentially. Yeah, they were always super um, like nurturing. Yeah. I think because there is that four-year age gap, age gap, and there's two of them when I was born. I think they just thought that I was their baby. Like they yeah. just wanted to take care of me and hold me. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so they've always been yeah super protective and supportive. So. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. Nice. And then tell me more about how you sort of fit in the school environment. So were you like a really sporty kid? Were you really academic? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, I don't think I was anywhere like crazy on either spectrum. I was pretty sporty. So oh. my primary school, I grew up in Toowoomba for primary school. So um, the school I went to there offered heaps of sports. So I got to trial a bit of everything. Um, and then in high school, I got into rowing. My dad, mm. my parents both rowed. Um, that's how they met, and so they were always oh, this super. Is very romantic. I know. <laughs> yeah, big They're cute. like Annie. Find your future. Yeah. Get <laughs> <get started." laughs> maybe, maybe they were just trying to match me. Uh, um, but yeah, they were always super into it, so they were keen for me to get involved. Um, so yeah, I started rowing in year nine um, and went through to year eleven, which I did love, but. Um, it was pretty intense like training and like I did find it a little bit um, isolating because of the training requirements. It was pretty full on. I was like, yeah, always tired and yeah. kind of did feel a little bit um, distant from like the rest of my school yeah. group and that kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, stopped in year 11 and switched to netball. Oh, that's more social. Yeah, that's much more social. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And was rowing, was it within your school or was it like something external, like an extracurricular? Yeah, just at school. Yeah, school. in the school competition. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And how were the early mornings? Did you enjoy that? They were rough. No, I hated early mornings. <laughs> I'm much better now. But back then, because I think, yeah, it was like a 430 start and oh my gosh. every time I would wake up and it's the price you, like the price you pay for true love I know, I know. Um, exactly <laughs> but um girls also we like our season is in winter yeah. um so it's not good. no it's not good it was it's freezing pitch, cold it's pitch black it's miserable oh. yeah it was not fun I mean I did enjoy it but yeah there were some downsides for sure yeah, my gosh. And what was the rowing schedule like? Is it just three times a week or was it more intense than that? No, so it was six days a week and oh. then sometimes twice a day training. So mornings oh. and then like a land session in the afternoon. So yeah, that's what I mean. It was a lot of training. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And then tell me about netball, best decision of your life? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I always played netball like in primary school, oh, always okay. loved it. And then, um, yeah, playing it in year 12 again was really fun because I do probably enjoy it a bit more um, and I continue playing through uni. I love it. So much fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. what was it sort of like going to a private girls school? Um, yeah, What's it was good. Drama? <laughs> drama? Um, yeah. I don't know, not really. Oh, I think okay. it was, it was 
was hard at first because I moved to that school um, in year nine um, oh, from Toowoomba because yeah. I did my like, year eight in Toowoomba and then we moved to Brisbane. So I think it was just a big shock, obviously like a new school, but then also just moving cities, not yeah. really having any friends there. Um, so it was hard at the beginning for sure. And I guess because like that cohort had all become they'd all kind of already formed their friendships in year eight. So then yeah, in year nine, I was kind sense. of the new girl coming in. Yeah. Um, but it was fine. Like I'm still like my friends now, my best friends now are my same friends from high school. So yeah, so I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And would you say, <laughs> and would you say that when you moved from Toowoomba to Brisbane, that was when you started to crawl out of your shell? I think so. Yeah. You I were think forced to. I was forced to. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I couldn't just, yeah, just keep being shy at to, yeah. Yeah. And how was the move to Brisbane like for you? Was there any big shock? Um, a little bit. I think like, yeah, Brisbane's obviously a lot bigger than Toowoomba. But yeah, even I, though it's not that big. Um, <laughs> yeah, true. Now we're here, it's like, oh, Brisbane's so tiny. Yeah, it's Sydney all relative. It's all relative. Um, but I'm really glad that we moved, to be honest. Like, oh. I think, yeah, I would have, yeah, struggled saying in Toowoomba. I don't know, I'd like... Yeah, more options. There's more to do, yeah. more happening, like, yeah, no, I liked it, so I'm yeah. glad we're here. That's yeah. awesome. And towards the end of probably grade 12, mm -hmm. what was like sort of floating through your mind in terms of careers, slash what did your parents want you to do? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> um, my parents never really gave much, um, like I don't, never really cared kind of what we did, me and my sisters, they just wanted us to pursue what we enjoyed. Yeah. Um, I actually, I hated maths in school. It was uh, just not my really, strength, still really. not really. <laughs> um, but yeah, all I knew <laughs> was that I wanted to do nothing to do with maths. Um, so then when it came around to choosing degrees, I initially did communications and arts. And funnily enough, I, um, yeah, just before starting, I'd already made my kind of, I'd put in my preferences. And then I said to my dad, I was like, oh, like maybe I should do business, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, that sounds kind of what I like what I want to do and he was and he said to me um, yeah you can but just remember <laughs> your math skills are not that <laughs> which is Friendly why reminder. Friendly reminder. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Um, which is why I did yeah communications and arts to begin with um, yeah. and then within six months I was like no it's not for me so yeah switch to business business um, which was a good decision so your parents aren't always right yeah. <laughs> In, uh, in this circumstance, but um, yeah, I guess like long-term career, I had no idea which, what I wanted to do, hence why kind of business felt like a good fit for me because... Um, it's broad. It's broad. <laughs> like, surely, surely I'll find yeah. something in here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had no clue whatsoever. Yeah, and why the switch from communications and arts to business? Communications, you would excel at that, I reckon. Um, I just found it a bit... Dull, try. yeah, a bit dry. Oh. I didn't love it. I just, I didn't think I was gaining anything from it. Like I, the first course, the courses I did was like a, yeah, multimedia and um, a writing course, creative writing, mm. which I enjoyed. Like I, I do enjoy language and writing and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I just found it a bit boring. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, you only gave it six months, girl. I know. <laughs> yeah, I just knew. I knew it wasn't right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then when you did business, how did you struggle with that maths? So it was fine. I was oh. really worried about it, right? Yeah. It was okay. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, it wasn't even bad. So I maybe I just developed my brain developed in those six months. Gave yeah. me a bit of time. <laughs> and then by the time it came around, yeah, it was not that hard. It's fine. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Because didn't you have to do probably like entry level accounting courses, finance courses or Um, I mean I did maths be in school, yeah. so like I didn't have to do any bridging. Oh, you mean like in the yeah, degree? Yeah, 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 yeah. Accounting. Yeah. Yeah. Um and whatnot. Finance, yeah. And they were fine. They were fine. Wow, go tell your dad that. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Wow, yeah. cool. And so what did you sort of end up majoring in for business? So in business, I majored in marketing mm -hmm. and then in arts, I majored in Spanish and psychology. Wow, that's like kind of like a triple major. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, and your favorite was marketing, I guess? Yeah, 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 I'd say so. I did also really enjoy Spanish. Um, I had an awesome teacher, so that was helpful. Cool. Yeah. Do you mind speaking a few words of Spanish for our audience? No, <laughs> no. Maybe I'm next okay. Time. Maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good.
good. And how do like you know um, a lot of people who are watching my podcast? They're probably like high school students, and they're like, mm -hmm. damn, like you know, what do I do in terms of career? Mm -hmm. Or maybe university students, and they don't know how to pick majors. So how do you sort of you know decide that you're triple threat? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, good question. I think marketing. I chose just because, yeah, out of that list of um, options, it was just something that always um, stood out to me. As I said, yeah, not super into maths, so that was fine. Like, I yeah, definitely could have didn't done want HR to do very well. Yeah, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I just, yeah, there wasn't any real reason, to be honest. Like, <laughs> I know it's probably not very helpful. Um, Excellent. But yeah, it just kind of stood out to me. And then with Spanish, um, I've always enjoyed language um, and. I actually yeah started my initially my majors were French and Spanish, mm. um, but then I dropped French. Um, but you as a French, no. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, I still enjoy it, but um, yeah, language was always something that I have been interested in and wanted to do. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's hard. It's definitely a hard decision, um, but that's the thing, I guess. Like yeah, just like don't be afraid to do something and then change your mind and yeah. swap courses. You know what I mean? Like I. Most people, most of my friends from uni have changed one thing or another throughout their degree, whether it's a whole degree or a major <laughs> or a minor or something. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't stress about it. Just try things out and see what fits. Yeah, that's awesome. And when you switch, you just switched quickly, right? So that's oh, pretty exactly. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fine for sure. And you can always do like summer semesters and that kind yeah. of thing. To speak oh, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> have you done a summer semester? No, I haven't. But um, a lot of my friends have. Yeah. And it's like the whole semester crammed into like a very short period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, not very. Fun. Yeah. Not fun. <laughs> yeah. Way to spend your holidays. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can multitask. You have done study at the beach? Semester? No, I haven't. Oh, okay, um, that's no. good. That's good. Yeah, no, not for me, but it's an option. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And then tell me more about psychology. What did you learn about yourself, huh? Um, well, I did like child developmental psych Ooh, um, psychology. So yeah, which was really interesting. Um, but yeah, I only did, it was my minor, so I only did yeah. a few um, units and yeah, mostly like statistics and things and maths. Again, I was trying to yeah. avoid, oh. but I just couldn't. Oh yeah, psychology is yeah, maths. Yeah, stats is, yeah, it's pretty much Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. You wouldn't think of it from the title. Yeah, I didn't think it was, and then yeah. I got there and I was like, what have I done? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was really interesting. Um, yeah, I find it hard to remember because I did it at like the start of my degree, so. Yeah. I have to remember, but yeah, it was good. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> cool, and tell me more about your jobs. So your first job was a retail salesperson, is that correct? Um, <laughs> yeah, I worked in a fruit shop. Woo, let's go. Yeah, so I was there for about four years. Loved yeah. it, still, yeah, I, um, yeah, really, uh, it was a family run business. Oh, and, that's kind of um, yeah, so it was really good. I was good friends with my boss. I'm still going to, I'm going to the Christmas party oh, this year. That's lovely. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ex employee. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and how was it selling? Were you selling actually? Were you like, come on guys, fresh apples, <laughs> <laughs> fresh oranges? Because, yeah, I suppose you're just like mainly like the cashier kind of. Yeah. 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 Check out chick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, and how did you decide to stay, um, stay for four years, man? That's quite a long time. I, just, I know, it is, but I just loved it because I. Just, yeah, became friends with, like, my boss there, um, all the other girls who worked there, I became really good friends with, and it was just super convenient, like, really good job to have during uni. The yeah. hours were really flexible. Discounted fruit, Discounted vitamin C fruit. and B. Yeah, Aww. yeah, exactly. You can just eat all you want while you're on shift. Wow, that's yeah. lovely. Yeah, I mean, I think I implemented that rule, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, my boss was fine with it. Okay. Still employed you for another three years. Exactly. <laughs> Team culture. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so we want to know, what is your favourite fruit then? Uh, I would say mango. Mango. Any yeah. fruit you don't like? Um, I never used to like kiwi fruits, Ooh. but then I was introduced to the golden the kiwi, kiwi fruit. fruit. Less sour, and yeah. And they're so sweet and so delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. That's cool. Mm. Nice. And then tell me what happened in 2018. You disappeared off the face of the earth. <laughs> Nothing happened just in because LinkedIn. I didn't put anything on my LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I was just enjoying uni, hanging yeah. out. Yeah, just enjoying uni lifestyle. <laughs> doing the bare minimum. <laughs> And how was the transition for you from high school to uni? Was it quite tough or? Um, it was in the beginning. Yeah, definitely just getting used to 
um, managing kind of time. your time, doing all like the study on your own. You're not having someone there saying, you know, reminding you when everything's due and um, getting you to yeah stay on track with all your learning and stuff. So yeah, it is definitely yeah very um, uh, yeah independent learning. Um, so that was hard in the beginning. Um, and then I learned to work smarter, not harder, mm. and just focus All those keywords. On, um, <laughs> on the assessment aspect. <laughs> Get what you need to do done for the assessment, and then yeah. just don't worry about the rest. <laughs> nice. So, in terms of study, were you like one of those last minute crammers, or? Yeah. Oh, no mm. shame. Oh. No, no, shame. <laughs> no. I mean, I feel like it all worked out pretty well. So. Yeah, but no, I, um, yeah, definitely I'm a huge procrastinator. Wow. And I think I've gotten better now. Like towards the end, I got more organized because I just yeah. couldn't deal with the stress anymore. But to yeah. begin with, and even, yeah, in high school, yeah, major procrastinator. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, no, to develop some good habits along the way. But in the beginning, yeah, definitely. Yeah, last that's minute. cool. Yeah. And which sort of model of education do you prefer? Like in high school, it's like everything is more like tight-knit mm -hmm. and maybe like less opportunities to do mm -hmm. random things but university it's like you're a free-range chicken 100%. do whatever you want yeah, so yeah. which environment do you sort of think you thrive more in definitely uni, uni. um for yeah. sure yeah, yeah yeah i loved uni i had the best yeah. time yeah best four years of your life five years four years four and a half oh uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd say so yeah, yeah. sure oh, to date yeah yeah <laughs> we yes. don't know what's coming <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, cool. And you yeah. did some quite interesting internships and extracurriculars. Have to talk about I that did. QPS <laughs> internship. Tell me more. My amazing internship. <laughs> yeah, QPS, um, Queensland Police Service. It's not as cool as it sounds. It was technically at the police service, <laughs> but it was in... Um, it was within the sports department oh, um, that's cool, doing no? like their marketing. So, um, yeah, it was just me and like one other guy who kind of ran the whole, the gym. Yeah. Um, and then I was just there to help with, yeah, doing some like campaigns and posters and stuff, so. Wow, so is this yeah. like to the general public or? Um, no, it was internally. So it, we were kind of promoting um, like health and wellbeing to QPS staff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the guy I was working with, he had developed an app um, like with workouts and that kind of thing. So um, yeah, it was about introducing that to the workforce. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and how did you get the job? So that was through um, an initiative that they ran at UQ where you kind of came in, did a bunch of case studies um, and um, what's it called when they put you all in a, in a big room and you're in groups and you have to do like um, an assessment centre. You oh, go through like yeah. an assessment centre. Um, and then kind of you do interviews and stuff and successful applicants are a, um, assigned to an internship and that was the one that they assigned me to. So yeah, I didn't apply for it. it was, oh, yeah, through was that UQ. through that um, UQ work experience yeah. program? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. wow. Yeah. Nice. Did you get to choose Queensland? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't get any choice. Yeah, they just yeah. sent me along. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's cool. And then when you're doing marketing at that point in time, mm -hmm. were you like really enjoying marketing? Were you like, man, I want a career in marketing? Yeah, 100%. So I always thought I would go um, to work in a marketing agency just yeah. because that's what I studied and I thought that's what you're supposed to do. Um, yeah, and then obviously did a lot of work with um, like the marketing and advertising society and newish. Um, so I was surrounded by all like other students and uh, who are all going to go into marketing agencies. So, um, yeah, I definitely thought that's what I was going to do. Mm. Wow, and we really want to know why. Why Why aren't you in marketing? <laughs> what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The great question. You're 100% welcome, but... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> uh, um, why? Uh, it's a good question. I just applied for um, the vacation program here because my older sister um, works here. And so she uh, told me about um, the vacation program applications opening up. Um, and I never thought um, I could even get in. So yeah, I hadn't crossed my radar until she mentioned it. And I thought, oh, I'll just give it a go. So yeah, applied for the vacation program here um, and got accepted and then came and loved it. And yeah, came back for the grad program. So wow. yeah. Nice. And did you ever do any sort of 
um, I guess like a marketing internship in like one of those big marketing agencies that you always dreamed of? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I didn't. We did um, like a few office tours and yeah, yeah. different um, kind of like panel sessions and that kind of thing with yeah. people like through uni societies. Um, but no, I never interned at one of them. So mm, yeah. yeah, wow. And how was your vocational role? in Ops Advisory? It was really good. Yeah, I loved it. Um, I think I just really enjoyed the whole team environment. Everyone was super welcoming and supportive. Um, and yeah, I just had a lot of fun and really enjoyed the work and the people. So yeah, couldn't really, had no complaints. Yeah, yeah wow. Good. And so what exactly does Ops Advisory do? <sighs> Hoping you wouldn't ask me that guy. Um, look, it's very varied, it's broad, um, nice. but we look at um, any business's operations. So um, there's kind of these six layers of an organization. Oh, tell me more. Do you know about the six layers? No, I um, don't. Well, the framework that applies, you know, it kind of looks at people, process, <laughs> service delivery. Do you actually want to know? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's lunch and learn. It is lunch and learn now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Um, Start from the beginning. So oh, the six layers again. are. Do you remember any of them? People. Yeah. Process, service delivery, uh, governance, tech, and like performance data insights. Oh. Um, yeah, super fun. So yeah, I guess it, it, it is super broad. So whatever the um, organization's problem is, we kind of look at it through those lenses and um, look at ways to kind of yeah maximize efficiencies and cut costs and yeah. Yeah. That cool. Kind of thing. So how would you sort of break down what you do? Would you say like 80% is meetings, you know, 10% writing reports or how would you sort of break down that pie? It's a good question. Um, I, the jobs that I've been on so far, they're obviously quite varied, but I've found the work to be super collaborative. So heaps of meetings as yeah. well today, <laughs> you've noticed. I've back got to back, back, back meetings. meetings. <laughs> yeah. um, we do have, yeah, a lot of meetings um, where, yeah, we just come together and discuss the problem and the approach and, um, kind of our priorities for the week. Um, so I would say maybe like 30% of the time meetings, 30 or 40, kind of depends. Yeah. Um, and then otherwise, yeah, um, writing reports, um, doing kind of like data analytics on stuff. Um, oh, look at you, data analytics. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's Pretty, pretty varied. It's hard to say. Every week's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. Depends on your priorities. And I guess, yeah, then that client meetings um, is another one that we spend a bit of time doing. So, yeah. yeah, bit of a mix. That's cool. And what industries do you mainly work with? Do you work with like financial services more or other industries? So far, um, I've worked with government mostly. Government? Yeah. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Best part of your job, worst part of your job. Let's go. <sighs> okay. Um, best part is easy. Best part is just the social element of it. <laughs> um, Big extrovert now. You've come a long I way. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I can still be introverted, but I do, yeah, like hanging out with people. Um, so yeah, I've loved all the events um, and kind of like the extra curricular stuff that we can get involved with here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, not just that, but also just like the social nature of the work that I've done, like you know, all the internal meetings and stuff. Um, <laughs> you love them. <laughs> I love a meeting, don't I? Um, yeah, so definitely the social element and the people um, that I've become really good friends with since working here. Um, and then least favorite. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, that's a hard question. Oh good, KPMG loves that response. <laughs> Good acting. Good acting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I want to think of something. Okay. Um, I don't know. What's your least favorite part? That's a question for another time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and back to your university <laughs> experience. Circling back. <laughs> yeah. So, what sort of inspired you to run for VP culture? What was it? A VP campus, campus culture. Campus culture. For yeah. The oh yeah. god. Great question. <laughs> um. I did not actively seek doing that position. I um, didn't even really know what um, like student politics and the union even was um, mm. before I ran for it. <laughs> um, but I think I was asked to by um, a group of people who were running um, 
the, the positions. And I think it was just because I was involved quite a lot with clubs and clubs and societies because I was VP of campus culture and then the subsection was clubs and societies. So I think I just um, been pretty heavily involved, knew a lot of people in that area, went to lots of events. Um, and so, yeah, they just thought I'd be a good fit for the position. So, yeah, I didn't want to do it, but they asked me to. Um, and I said no a few times. And then they asked me a few more times. Um, and yeah, I just did it. So, yeah. Wow. And tell me more about those campaigning days. Yeah. So much fun. Um, yeah, look, it's not really me. I wasn't, and especially back then, I was not at all into, yeah, politics or student politics or any of that kind of thing. Um, so it was an interesting time in my life. I did enjoy it. <laughs> Um, the campaigning, yeah, not really for me. Um, yeah, it's a lot of drama that, that oh, goes with hello. it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, I feel like you know, you're just haggling people walking around yeah, uni yeah. saying, so much vote, for me, vote for me. I know, yeah. right? I can handle it. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, but it was all right. It was kind of fun. And like, yeah, I definitely, I feel like my whole, those few years of my uni experience, I was just exposed to so many new opportunities and yeah. different things. So um, I'm glad I did it. Yeah, I think I yeah definitely like learned a lot from doing that. But yeah, something I never thought I would get involved with. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Well, good on you. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. So was it just one week of campaigning or? I think it's two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. And just standing there from like nine to five? Yeah, basically. People come and go like when you have classes and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise you just stand around and chat with people and hand out fires. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so if someone's running for a, like a similar-ish position in UK Union, mm -hmm. give them some of your wisdom. Oh, some wisdom. Wow. Um, well, when you're running for the position, I think it's just important to be super genuine in what you're doing. Like, I would say if you are going to run on a ticket, then like make sure that you. Uh, kind of comfortable with the um, your like yeah the ideas um, that your ticket want to put forward um, and yeah just make sure that it is something that you want to do because you do you, like it, it it's hard you do experience um, some uh, like everyone has their own opinion of yeah. you know politics and some people do take it really seriously and I think that's something that I wasn't necessarily prepared for is that kind of people would be suddenly kind of turning to me and asking why, you know, things were the way they were. And um, yeah, like it is, yeah, definitely. It's pretty confronting. Yeah, it is a bit confronting. I found it a bit confronting. Yeah, you become um, like that walking target. Yeah, well considering, Annie. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. Um, yeah, just like, yeah, kind of walked into it pretty um, blind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just be willing to have yeah, open conversations with people. Um, and yeah, just be, be yourself and don't try and like sell ideas that aren't, um, realistic, I would say. And be really nice to the other staff who work in the union. Oh, um, yeah. 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 That's good. Some pretty good advice. Yeah. So it was like probably like a one year term, was it? Yeah. 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 So what, what did you do during the year? <laughs> Great question. So yeah, I worked really closely with the kind of clubs and societies manager, Emily. Um, and she was awesome and we would organise different events throughout the year. Um, so we did like a big um, CNS camp at the start of the year, mm. which was really fun. Um, and CNS then stands for? Clubs and Society. Ah, very yes. good. Yes. <laughs> Those acronyms. I know, they follow you everywhere, it don't they? CS, it shouldn't have an N. Yeah, well clubs and society. Yeah, but no one puts N because that's not a very important word, right? Ah, oh, true, CNS. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds better, CNS and CS. CS, yeah. I guess it just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Club, clubs and socks is also. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'd organise different events throughout the year and then mostly just managing um, all the like kind of different queries that clubs had, so any issues that they would have. Um, a lot of it was kind of like admin um, managing, you know, um, everyone's like membership. Um, and any issues we also, I chaired the clubs and societies committee. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be, I think it was a monthly 
meeting um, and so anyone on campus if they wanted to start a new club or they had any issues or there's like disciplinary action or that kind of thing we'd have yeah this committee that um, kind of decided on those things um, so yeah that committee and then yeah just different yeah events throughout the year and yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you have any favourite highlights? Um, Sorry to put you on the spot. No, <laughs> not at all. It's actually just a really good test of my memory because yeah. it wasn't that long ago, but it feels like a complete yeah. lifetime ago. Um, favourite memories? I think, I guess the first thing that came to mind from that position was the camp um, that we ran just because it was so much fun. Like, yeah, I think it was two days, um, big group of people. And yeah, it was obviously like a lot of, effort to organise, so it was nice just kind of seeing that come to fruition. Um, so yeah, the camp was probably a highlight, yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of drama at the camp, I heard. Drama. No, there was no yeah. drama. Oh, I don't know okay, who you've been okay. talking to. Oh. Thanks for clearing the air. <laughs> Trying to catch me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, on to the next extracurricular that you did, <clears throat> Newish Communications. Mm. You did that for quite a bit, like a year or two or something, hey? Yeah, a couple of years. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yes, yeah, so and Newish was um, an initiative that we started, I think it was 20, end of 2019. Um, Is that right? Maybe, maybe. I studied my LinkedIn closely enough. <laughs> yeah, it was around not that then. closely. <laughs> um, and so it's a student run um, organisation to um, communications agency um, that we started with one of our uh, uni lecturers, Nick Pontes, so he, oh, that's kinda cool. um, yeah, so it was his idea, um, he, yeah, came, he, how did, it, I don't even know how, I think he must have just posted through, because at the time I was with um, the Marketing and Advertising Society, and so yeah. I think he just put a post out to the group saying, I, yeah, want to start this um, communications agency that's completely student run, is there anyone that wants to get involved, so I applied for that. Um, <clears throat> and then at the start it was just six or seven of us um, and yeah we essentially just started this business um, so yeah the first few months was just really about um, getting kind of the admin of the business set up so um, you know like getting the business incorporated and kind of figuring out our vision and um, strategic ambition and that kind of thing yeah. um, and then from there building um, industry connections, so finding mentors for the students, um, looking for uh, clients to work with, um, and then recruiting students. So um, students can apply each semester. Um, they, yeah, submit their application and then we conduct interviews and bring them on board. And um, yeah, it's just like a little business, um, oh, but it's cool. awesome. Yeah, it was yeah so much fun. And yeah, there's all the students who I worked with there were just, yeah, super hardworking, super passionate. Awesome people, so um, yeah, I loved it, and yet yeah, still going really strong to this day. So yeah, really happy with them. Yeah, that's awesome. And what kind of marketing stuff did you do for them? Were you like doing posters, brochures, that kind of thing, or yeah, social media maybe? It was pretty varied. Yep. So all of that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, social media was a big one. Um, we also had some really awesome like videographers. So mm, um, awesome. we put together video campaigns. Um, yeah go to, sometimes we'd go to location and um, do shoots for yeah. the companies and then yeah, use that as collateral to, for their social medias. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. We also did, yeah, different campaigns and um, strategy, like marketing strategy for some companies. So yeah, it was super varied. I'm just trying to think, but yeah. Yeah, nice. that's cool. And just wondering, did you actually like charge the client money? Yeah, you we did. did. Well, so it's like, like an actual business. So it's like a real life business. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So initially we started off just doing pro bono work. And yeah. um, when I was there, at least it was majority of it was um, pro bono because we were still kind of in our infancy. Um, but yeah, we definitely yeah had some paying clients. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, I know. So it was, yeah, yeah. yeah but I guess the money is big um, <laughs> milestone when we yeah, did start getting paid. But I guess the money doesn't go to the students, right? No, unfortunately yeah. not. No, Does it go back all... into the union or something? Um, no, so it just goes to the organisation. So then we can use that money for like software or yeah. equipment or yeah. Yeah, just feeding back. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it just supports the business. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, not for profit. So. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Cool. We're nearly at the end of the podcast. Just okay. a few more questions that are a bit random. Okay. So Annie, what do you think the meaning of life is in your opinion? It's <laughs> a great question. <laughs> Um, I don't know, 
it's a hard one, but I think for me, it would be just around the pursuit of kind of joyful experiences and sharing those with people you love. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And then tell me, how tall are you, Annie? <laughs> Woo! The big, the big question yeah, everyone yeah, wants yeah. to know. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't look uh, that tall from like this view. No, but, I, yeah. I'm bad posture. But uh, <laughs> I'm six foot one. Oh, and how much is that in centimeters? I think it's like 186. Yeah. Pretty Amazing. Cool, I know. And tell me about your relationship with your height. How you sort of changed throughout the years. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good it's a good question. Um I have yeah always been super tall, so even in year one there's a wow. class photo and all everyone's like this and I'm like this. Midgets. Um, <laughs> right, seriously. <laughs> Gotta eat your veggies. Yeah. <laughs> um but no, I did yeah, I always stood out and definitely growing up I hated it. Um, cause as I said, I was super shy, super introverted. Yeah. I didn't want to be noticed. I didn't want people to look at me. Um, so yeah, I didn't like it at all. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to be like everyone else, but then, yeah, I guess kind of along the same, um, time that I became a bit more extroverted and more comfortable in my skin. Um, I started to embrace it. Um, yeah. and yeah, I don't know, like it definitely is a big part of my identity and you know, how people see me and how I see myself. So. Um, yeah, I love it now. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So the fun question is, if you could wave a magic wand and change that with like, you know, sort of additional cost or anything like that, would you, would you, would you change your height or would you bump it down to like a 165, 170? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not at all. I wouldn't change anything. Really? Yeah. Add a few centimeters maybe. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, enough is enough. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, yeah, I'm happy. I feel like it's just important to kind of embrace, um, yeah, who you are, what you've been given, and yeah, just enjoy yeah. it. So that's what I've done. Yeah, that's awesome. And it also helps with your running hobby, correct? <sighs> Very true. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it does help. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about being a COVID runner. How did it all start? Mm, yeah, for sure. So was never a runner, um, hated running, probably had never run more than five Ks <laughs> um, prior to... COVID and then I wasn't even that into exercise. I would just kind of go to the gym a couple of times a week, wasn't interested. Um, and then, yeah, during COVID, obviously all the gyms shut and there was really nothing else to do other than get outside, go for walks, go for runs. Um, and that was also kind of a way of socializing with my friends, right? Cause you could yeah. only kind of, you could go for walks with people. Um, so I just started running with my friends and got super into it. Um, when was that? Yeah, 2020. Um, yeah, built up my running fitness and then um, had a goal last year, last year, um, to do a half marathon. So wow. um, yeah, it kind of escalated very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we'd signed up to do the Gold Coast half marathon, um, but then it was canceled because of COVID, mm. but um, we still wanted to do it. We'd been training heaps um, and yeah, it was obviously a big milestone so we just ran it um in brisbane along the brisbane river started it um the regatta and ran to i don't know like past new farm yeah anyway just ran yeah um yeah around the river and um yeah that's when i did my first half marathon and probably my last but i don't know we'll <laughs> see <laughs> yeah that's cool and what do you love about running how does it make you feel or yeah i think um Definitely just helps kind of clear your head. Um, I think, yeah, a lot of people get into running for like mental health stuff, which yeah. um, I definitely, yeah, enjoy. Like if I go a few days now without exercising or running, I just start feeling a bit gross. And yeah, um, yeah I just, yeah, definitely do it for like mental clarity and also just socializing. A lot of my friends are super sporty, super yeah. Um, yeah, fit and into running. So definitely initially it was just the peer pressure of like hanging yeah. out with my friends. <laughs> Trying come. to fit in again. I know, right? But now I love it. So. Yeah, um, yeah, so the social element is definitely huge for me. Um, and then, yeah, I just love feeling fit. Um, and yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Another fun question. <laughs> so if you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do differently about your life? <laughs> um, look, I'd definitely go a little bit crazy with some shopping. Oh, yes. Are you like um, clothes shopping? Yeah, dresses, yeah, I'm a bit it? of a shopaholic. Yeah. Um, no, I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be better. I'm really not. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Buy a house or buy some fun stuff, but I wouldn't change 
that much. Like, I think, um, so, like, early on in my career, um, I'm <clears throat> enjoying where I am now, and, yeah, I'd probably stay here. I'd, yeah, still work, keep doing that. Might just go on a few more holidays. Um, yeah. <laughs> Purchased annual leave. Yeah. Can afford. Exactly. Can afford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, totally. So, yeah. Yeah. But not heaps. That's cool. So we're at the end of the podcast. One okay. way, bye. Okay, <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>